On this week's episode, it's another first, and we're in a very special location, Abidos Castle, my favorite castle. And I'm joined by Cecilia Di Beidl, born and raised in this area, and an incredibly talented jewelry designer and jewelry maker. We discuss, amongst other things, what she appreciates about living and growing up in this area, some of her story and how she got to this point of designing these incredible pieces of jewelry. Of course, we speak about this castle and what makes it such a unique and special place. And Cecilia shares how this place inspires her to create beautiful jewelry. For those of you listening, head over to our YouTube channel so that you can see some of the photos that we published during this episode. And for those of you watching, click down below and subscribe. And now over to my conversation with Cecilia Ribeiro. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal The Simple Life. And we may, I keep saying this, I've said this a couple of times, or maybe in our most creative location yet, but I think this time it really is the most creative location. I'm here with Cecilia Ribeiro. Cecilia, hello. Hello, nice thank you. Likewise, thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you very well for the invitation. You're very welcome. Tell us, uh, tell the people listening where we are right now. Well, we are uh, in the beginning of the, the castle from Obidos. Uh, it's a very nice place here. The, the structures, the houses, the, the, the place is very, very inspiring to make this project alive here. Okay, and we're in your shop. We're yes. in your shop right now. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your shop and tell us a little bit about you. Well, um, about the shop, it's a very recent project. Uh, and maybe I'm going to mix the, 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 okay. the both histories. Uh, I'm a jeweler since uh, 2018, uh, even if I, I made jewelry uh, before. Uh, but seriously, with noble uh, materials um, since 2018. And, uh, well, very recent we had the confinement time and we had to define some strategies, something went uh, uh, differently. We needed to have something differently happening. So we have started a project two years ago of the store and um, which began upstairs and then now very recently since two months ago we've opened the doors of this one here so the shop is two floors but actually dedicated to the jewelry is this one that you can see and um well it was a very very hard times because um covid didn't allow us to uh continue working working but actually, at some point, this was a nice thing from it. We had to to change something. This was it. We okay. found a solution. Okay. Tell us about a little bit about you. You're not you're not from Obidos. You grew up nearby. Were you born nearby? Well, I was born nearby Obidos. It's still Obidos, but actually, the schools that I was, it was the next city, Caldas da Rainha. Okay. Um, so I went to school there, um, and, and my parents worked there, so okay. it was easier okay. to be there. Okay, but your hometown, would you say your hometown is Obidos? Well, I think so. Yes, it is, but it was also Caldas too, but it was like during the active part of the day uh, studying in Caldas, but then walking by and passing by and family in Obidos. So it was both of them. Okay. It was very nice. Okay. We'll talk about Obidos in a little bit. Um, you mentioned that you were, 2018 was when you officially sort of became licensed to be a jeweler. You said no more materials, but we're talking precious metals, correct? Yes. yes. So that's quite a long process to to be able to do that it was uh because actually i'm um industrial designer so mm -hmm. i was doing some furniture some uh space uh, uh decoration some small projects but jewelry was something that i've made uh since i was little with the beads and with uh, some wires because my father uh, he's a mechanic and I was grabbing the, his materials to, to make my own stuff. So it was really interesting how I uh, shown my passion so early. Uh, 
I think I was eight, nine, where I when I first uh, done my first necklace. Okay, done my tell first us about necklace. your first. Tell us about it. Can you remember? Yes, I do. I actually have a picture on my Instagram um, uh, because it was like a childish dream. And then uh, today I can do it. So it was a, a wire, a copper wire from the cars okay. uh, wrapped around three beads and several times. So it's a very simple, hmm. but it, it has already some knowledge there to uh, use some tools to cut it so you don't feel it or uh, do harm so mm -hmm. it's 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 a it was a, a nice project in the, and it started there actually then I went to study I explored other things but always in in the artist um, in the artist area and uh, in 2011 I found myself again mixing some wires, buttons and beads. So I started something again uh, in a brand. Um, I had some clients, I had some shops and then I went to Brass and Cork. There's also a very nice project there. And finally in 2018 I decided that I wanted to uh, make a class for um, and I went to Barcelona. I mm -hmm. made there a uh, two two years class, and then I decided that I would do this to to the rest of my life if possible, if possible. Okay, amazing. Tell tell us a little bit about that time in Barcelona. What were the what, I mean? What it, Barcelona is an amazing amazing city. Well, it is. It Was is. it your first time kind of living overseas, or had you lived? other places before? Well, I've studied in Coimbra, but it's Portugal, so it's very different. Yeah. I'm still uh, in my in my country yeah, with yeah. my language. Uh, Barcelona it was very, very different. Um, but I grew up a lot. It's, it's, it's alive every day, every night, every minute. Something changes every day. Uh, the movement, the inspiration, Gaudi, uh, architecture, uh, the streets, the languages, because there's people from all over the world working, experiencing. So the idea of sharing experiences, uh, it was really nice. And then I started working in a, in a um, atelier, yeah. in an atelier. Yeah. And we were uh, six girls. One it was Mexican, the other one, the other one Scottish, uh, uh, Scott from Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, German, uh, French, Portuguese, and then it's missing. It's missing one. It's miss I don't remember from where was uh, Vienna, uh, but she is from uh, nearby Mexico too. So it was really nice, very interesting. Uh, sharing uh, culture, sharing experiences, knowledge. It was really nice there. Hmm. What did you miss about Portugal while you were there? Home, coffee, good coffee from my grandmothers. Um, uh, even the soup. I made my soup and the soup is different. Food is different. The cherish of the people is different. The, um, Oh. Yes, it's it's very it's different. different. Yeah. Yeah, because it's so funny. I mean, the people who listen to the podcast that I, I make fun of the Spanish a lot because you know, <laughs> they are neighbours. Um, just a joke, but I mean, it's quite interesting because they are the, the the personality of the people is very very different, and the um, the feeling that they that you have with the, with the and we're right next door to them. Well, and actually, I'm not sure if you felt already, but between Lisbon and Porto, which is in the same country, they are different. Porto, in 10 minutes you can have dinner like in every house, you're invited and in Lisbon it's not like that. Uh, so I think it's something about having, uh, it's, it's cultural and it's not about the country, it's about, the Spanish are difficult, the Spanish is... There goes a horse, <laughs> it's the castle life. Yes. It's the castle life. It's the, the traffic train. from the castle. Yes, the traffic. It's I the usually, traffic. I usually uh, uh, play with that. Sometimes we have like uh, 
um, three or four bus of people going around and then we have horses and then we have this is my traffic <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so it was, in, it was in Barcelona that you realized hey this is what I want to do forever well it was it was because I've started there a project I made it actually a workshop it was it was very difficult to, to begin to make jewelry with precious materials. It's too expensive to begin whatever and to have the papers all done, to have all the licenses. It's very, very expensive. And I was already struggling because I didn't have much opportunity to work. And it was uh, always, um, well, actually I started in a supermarket. So I was a little bit sad. Uh, about the ways that the things uh, were turning in and I decided to spend my last money in this workshop so here yeah. I'm gonna decide if I want to do this or not for the rest of my life and actually it worked it was I was very very sad about this because it was very difficult to begin and to to explore and then finally at this workshop it was so interesting it opened like a Pandora box of my creativity I want to explore this I really want to go this way so there I was sure but actually in Barcelona everything's so expensive there's no family to help there's no support it, 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 it's not about money actually at some point you need support you know you need to to feel like you have um, a little bit of stru uh, structure in people, yes, to, to, to go your way. And um, actually, my father was used to say that I make castles in the air. And just recently, I just put some pillars on my castle. So I'm in, in my castle, finally. Uh, and that's a very nice uh, way to describe the process, because I've started uh so confused and with all so much directions that was so interesting the way that i was so excited about jewelry and it was about that workshop it began something really nice so it was a big risk but it paid off yes yeah. finally amazing. i think so i think so yes amazing let's talk about some of your work um when you and i first started uh, and let's put this into context because I'm, I'm obviously this is not really the type of thing that I'll buy for myself. Mm -hmm. um, but I saw it online and I saw it at some point on, on Instagram. And wow, it's got such your, your jewelry's got such a unique look to it. Um, it's really beautiful. And we have to talk about some shopping for Christmas time. For I have, I have two daughters and a wife, so we'll need to speak about Christmas time, <laughs> but um. And one of the things that you mentioned is that Abidos inspires you. So just to explain a little bit about your jewelry, first of all, because it's quite unique um, for people that don't know it. And how does Abidos or this area inspire your, your work? Well, um, the space, it has so much nature. It has so much information that you can explore and as a designer, uh, everything that you um, explore and inspire yourself, it comes from nature. So I feel like that's happening to me too when I think about jewelry. So I was so uh, divided between design and art and at some point how or why shouldn't I make uh, wearable sculptures? So it's, it's wearable art. That's what I define or uh, define my work. And about the inspiration, I find that in the nature, in the surroundings, we have like a, the sea rocks, you have like a niche where you can walk between those uh, big, big rocks yes. and layers of rocks. So I, I really like that idea of transforming a piece of jewelry that you can... Um, wear every day with comfort but also represents an experience uh, that's where i i try to put my jewelry very recently i've made this ring that it was made from a banana skin wow so it was a yes 
<laughs> can you see that? You can find it more on Instagram, then I will give you some information. So this, this piece, it was made from a banana skin. Uh, it was a very nice moment that I had with my dog, yeah. a very happy one. And uh, I wanted to keep that moment with me for uh, a long time. For It's like eternal, or it is eternal, because the piece will stay, the jewelry will stay. Um, and then I started this um, project of uh, doing uh, jewelry with the napkin of a meal that I had, with a, a piece of nature that I found, uh, that it can be uh, some piece of a tree, some piece of leaf. Um, I've got some, some pieces also with the leaf over there. Mm -hmm. that you can see the lines, you can see the, the nature there. So I like this idea of grabbing and exploring, uh, walking around a lot of times. So I really like this idea of grabbing a little bit of nature and transforming into wearable sculptures. Wearable art. Yes. And so that's the, the, the main concept behind the jewelry is yes. art, the, the, the structure, Structural things that are interesting, the shape of things, the form, the textures. Yes, it is able to wear it exactly. And it's about also about the castle uh, over there. I have some uh, a ring that I named the tower ring, which is the inspiration about the the architecture of the wall. And um, well, you can see a balance, or I try to do it actually, a balance between a classic jewelry but also a um, contemporary view about the nature, about the surroundings, which is a lot of trees, a lot of sea and rocks and cliffs. I love this. That's, that's why I like this um, idea of being here. It's my home, but it's also a very inspired place. Yeah. Inspiring, yeah. You talk about... Um you had sort of that, that, that sort of engineering side of things, industrial side of things, but also the creative side. And it's something quite Portuguese, actually, because you have this, in Portugal, you always have this combination of we like beautiful things, but it should also be practical and make sense. Exactly. And so it's quite an interesting that your jewelry represents that, that part of, of our DNA. I think that um, everything should have a function. Even if it is to hang on the wall and look at it every day. But for me, I would like to do something more. I would like to do something that you could walk with it every day and remember that piece of feeling, that, that moment every day. It's like almost if you have a tattoo that you can change. <laughs> it's maybe maybe some, some meanings. People do some tattoos to remember uh, a message or a feeling or a person or a moment and for me jewelry is um, something like that I like to reproduce uh, a moment uh, a cliff uh, near a, a passage to the castle where you can see mm -hmm. the ring or the earrings with the design of the castle or my interpretation interpretation from the castle so I like to see it uh, that way, with the function. Art with the function. Okay. Let's talk about the castle. The castle. Because when I'm, I mean, when I, every boy loves castles, but I'm next level, I love castles. <laughs> so when I moved to Portugal, it was like being in a candy store. There's mm -hmm. so many castles. Yeah. And then I end up living like three minutes away from probably what I think I'm biased, a little bit suspect, you know, but okay. the most beautiful one. For us, for me, is, is this one right here? Um, what do you know? What do you want to tell people about the about the castle? Well, and I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to tell me something that I don't already know about the castle. So I don't know if go. I'm able to. Let's try, let's try, let's try. <laughs> I don't know if I'm able to 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 do that. What I can say is that it's a very uh, nice place to have a, a big walk. Actually, I'm afraid of heights, 
So you um, come out? I did, but very slowly in very different moments. <laughs> it's like I've never done at the once whole the whole thing. Okay. Uh, but it's a, a really nice space uh, to explore, to take a walk, to be to to be there exploring one day and have time to be. Um, also, it's interesting to live nearby actually because you can do that several times. And each time you come, you can see something different. You can explore a place. Uh, it depends on your mood because actually you have so much uh, possibilities inside and it's about food and it's about uh, experiences, it's about uh, knowing people, um, some, some stores and some concepts also to explore. You have artists, you have a lot of ceramists, as ceramic, artists, ceramic yeah. artists, you have jewelers now. You have uh, uh, Eusebio with the um, with the uh, classical guitars. He makes it. Mm -hmm. He makes the the um, music uh, inst instruments. Yes. Yeah. So the thing is, you have so many perspectives from a village, a castle that actually is alive, and it has. Uh, a lot of services and mm. a lot of uh, experiences to explore. I was recently at Folio. Yeah. Uh, Folio, you have a lot of um, information reunions, a lot of uh, meetings with uh, very interesting uh, um, purposes and people. And also, in the end, you have like a relaxing moment with a concert where you can uh, see the castle, you can see the lights in the wall. So it's a very nice space to relax. You have so many realities that actually it's nice to be here yeah. around. It's, a, it's an amazing combination of the old and new. For, for people listening, True. people still live inside the castles, not as many as before, not as many as... Well, some time ago, but there's yes. still people that have their homes within within the walls of the castle. Yes. But what I love about it, I mean, we can talk about the history of the castle because that's also interesting. But um, you've got this repurposing of the space um, and the the areas for new things. So you've got the the concept store, and you've got the the food trucks, and you've got a jeweler now, and you've got lots of other things. How do you feel about that? That bringing together of the old and the and the new um, and then coexisting? Well, for me, uh, as a jeweler, it's very interesting to get together with the knowledge that you had before and with the contemporary view. As a um, person who lives here, it's very nice to feel like everything get together for a purpose. Everything uh, we are useful to um, from the beginning until the end. We ha we need to share experiences. We need to share knowledge. We need to uh, uh, walk around together. We we can't we can't say no to the experiences. The old and the new should be together. Should yes. Okay. For me, it's 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 important. Yeah, I, I think like so. That. Yeah, yeah, I agree. What do you know about the history of the castle? I'm actually very, very bad about it. Yes, I okay. don't have much information about it. But I know that it was, um, how do you say, dot. When, um, when the queen receives it, has a gift. Yes. It was an engagement present. Exactly. It was like that, passed by uh, generations to the queens. And uh, once nice, nice gift, most people get a ring. <laughs> the queens, the queens get a castle. And the ring can be good, the ring can be good, but the castle is, it was a lot of pieces of rocks actually, not just one. Uh, and it was Reine Dona Leonor, which is the queen of Caldas, the Reine, uh, was one of them. I know that there's a connection because she leave it here, and, but she needed to have uh, baths in the waters of Caldas because they have uh, really nice properties for the for the skin. 
Yeah, the hot, the hot springs, the exactly. sulfur in the waters. And exactly. So she lived here, and then she went there uh, to to have the treatments. Um, and that's actually the very simple one. I'm very bad for this this history. I should I should look for it. Should look for more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm disappointed. I'm just joking. Sorry. I'm just joking. <laughs> Everybody knows Obidos because of the castle, but actually, it's a, Obidos is a region. It's a it's a bigger municipality. Oh yeah. Uh, and what else? What else do you want people to know about the wider area of Obidos? It's not just about the castle. There's a lot of other interesting places and things to see. Well, yes, you have. Here is it's the main uh, history, uh, but you have like Lagoa do Obidos, Bahaje. Um, about about it, the dam? Yes, yeah. it's a really nice space to explore, to have a walk nearby. Um, also, you have uh, Serra del Rey. I think Serra del Rey is not Peniche, I'm not sure. I'm but not it's sure. Close. But it's close. close. You have a lot of um, uh, how do you, woods. Uh, yeah, forests. Yeah, forest. yeah, forest. You have a lot of forest to explore. And uh, well, Rayu in in Lagoa do Obidos is a really nice place where the um, uh, it's it, it's it's almost uh, yes it's uh, salted water so it's the lagoon yeah, yeah the lagoon it it goes there uh, and you can explore a lot of nature there so it's uh, well and there's more actually you have somewhere it's not about Obidos but Obidos is located with very nice places like San Martin, Nazare, um, Balial, uh, how more, uh, so much to explore about nature and about sea, about uh, food. Oh my god, food. Yeah. Yes. Tell people where they should go eat in the Obidos, in the Obidos not the castle, because the castle, some of there's some nice places, but where would you send people to have a good meal in this area? In this area? Well, you have, uh, it depends if you want fish, fish you have Peniche, you have San Martinho, uh, also, um, oh my god, you, in Caldas you have um, really nice spaces and very different from each other, like, uh, can I say names? Yes. Oh, you have Geo, Maratona, mm -hmm. uh, you have Sa Flor. Safo is a really nice one uh, with a lot of vegetable options. Um, you have uh, here inside of the wall, you have um, lounge, you have Pial Casa dos Petiscos, Tasca Sorta, which is a very nice one. You have also in São Martinho, there's a pizzeria uh, named Portugal. It's a very nice one with a very nice view. So I think it's really interesting yeah. to have a walk to to it's the beach, the nat natural um, uh, bay from Peninsula, or I'm not sure if you're Europe, but Peninsula it is the natural bay. It's very very pretty. Yeah, also very inspirational. Well, and for now, I think yeah. I think it's that's good. That's good. It's good. How, how does this place, you know, you, you've spoken about how kind of the, this place inspires you to, with the materials and, and, and how it's all your jewelry, but as a creative person it needs time to, to kind of connect and the time to, to think and just take a breath and be inspired again. How does, how does this place help you with that? Well, to give you that space to create. Actually, sometimes I think it's very chaotic in not about the space. <laughs> sometimes I feel like the inspiration, uh, it comes in the middle of chaos. It's mm -hmm. like a way to express uh, this chaos. And um, when this happens, I might uh, look for more time to explore surroundings, surroundings mm -hmm. and to walk uh, in this nature, so I think everything comes together. I'm I'm feeling chaos, and then I uh, explore more around here, and and then I I get creative um, about the communication, about the way I feel, about every every piece has a a different meaning. It has a um, a little bit of the surroundings, and and 
and yes, it's inspired by a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. You've traveled quite a lot. I know you were in um, you did a fader not long ago. Yes. In I'm in in uh, Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. I went to Monique, I went to Paris, I went to, uh, 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 well, that's it, to to explore for now, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So you've traveled quite a bit, you've lived in Barcelona, what, what are some of the things that you appreciate about, about Portugal? Well, what I can say is that, uh, once again, um, the people are more cozy, the weather, uh, the food, the the experiences. Uh, how can I say? It's like if you are welcome in every place that you go, and sometimes it's even if people are nice. That's what I felt in 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 Munich. In German people are nice, but it's like if you're not. It's not about being. Uh, Right. Yes, they they're not cozy, so that's the first feeling that I have in Amsterdam. Uh, for instance, I felt the other way around. The um, bus driver was saying good morning to everyone that was getting inside, and if you are going for a coffee, it comes with a heart, it comes with a flower, it comes with something designed on a. A coffee. So for me, it's on simple things that you can find the, a little bit of uh, happy time to begin your day. So if you start with a good morning from the bus driver and with a, a heart in your coffee, you can start your day smiling and then it will be different all day. Uh, and I think that's, that's important. Um, the way that people connect with each other and the way they they receive us, or we receive them. It's also important. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, th I think it's something that maybe we we take for granted sometimes in Portugal. That we you walk into a cafe and people say good morning. You know, you people take the time to stop and say hello and talk in the street. And in a lot of other places, this doesn't happen. And when it does happen in other places, it's rare. When it happens here, it's normal. It's normal. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I felt. Uh, and here at some point you, you have friends, you go to the coffee and uh, about the time that you are having breakfast, usually there's six, five people that have breakfast at the same time and the next day you get together and, and you mm -hmm. can begin the friendship easier like that. And, and it's, it's, it's easy to go to a cafe and, and, and um, feel like you have friends feel like you can do another family where you have lunch where you go just for a coffee or breakfast or something people are are uh, very very um cherish is is that the word you cherish each other yeah. okay you exactly keep, keep caring caring okay yeah. it's about that i think yeah i mean um you, you for, for a young lady like yourself doing a business and the stress that that comes with that, that's important to you. I that think. you don't feel like you're alone. You feel like even when you go have a coffee, there's someone who's caring, who's asking you how things are. Yeah, it's, it's very important, the opinion of everyone. I know that I want to do this, but actually, uh, I depend a lot of uh, from other people's opinion. I know that I want to do something about the architecture of the castle. I know that I want to do something with meaning. But the thing is, in the end of the day, it's a piece of jewelry. And people uh, need to have an opinion about if it is comfortable, if it is too heavy, if it is uh, interesting. So it's about doing doing jewelry it's about a lot of concepts and about um uh also feeling comfortable so we need to have yeah. the, the people's opinion and also it can be a lot of loneliness here so it's very important this times i i really do uh give much importance to the sharing experiences and sharing moments yeah Sitting in a stall there on your own to go outside, it's nice to connect with people. Well, but the thing is, 
at the the store is actually two months old. So uh, before I was at the workshop alone. So it was closed space. I was going to the fairs. I was going to visit uh, some jewelries that I work with in Porto or Lisbon. But uh, working, I was working alone. So it was sometimes crazy times. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you 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 mentioned earlier that you that you're doing a, um, some co work here. You got some people that else have the work that you're trying to show in your store from people from the region. Yes. Um, this is also something quite Portuguese. We we, we stick together. There's a real community of things. A community of, of helping each other and, and that's also a beautiful thing. Well, actually the project of Identidad uh, has started like four years ago, maybe four mm -hmm. or five. But just in the beginning of the, of the confinement time, I got in with Teresa. So we made a refresh for the space and we wanted to show our work. Because jewelry has so much legal things, we weren't able to put it upstairs. So we end up with a store of two floors and uh, different concepts and different uh, ways to see design and art, but everything local. So the idea was to show what we can do uh, in Obidos as an artist, but also to show to the public that comes and visit. And this is a very strong way to show um, a network, to show how different we are from each other and also that we do this here. It's not about, uh, it's not about, uh, how can I say, it's about identity. We show the identity of uh, Obidus. Mm -hmm. We've started this project very recently. Um, and f the four of us, we have an uh, easy connection. But Obidosh, it has more, I think, six jewelers. So I want to call them and I want to put this project bigger. But the thing is, the well, it, sometimes it's money, sometimes it's space, sometimes it's uh, struggling because I produce my work and then I sell it and then I make a refresh to the store and so it's so many so much work that sometimes it's very difficult to keep up with the with the purposes uh, well having f uh, done fast or yeah do it quickly exactly yeah, yeah. quickly yeah, yeah. so but that's the idea to have this um, connection with all the jewelers uh, from Obidos and to help each other we're stronger it's, it's easier, yes, it's yeah. easier. Yeah. We can do this. Nice. Um, Cecilia, you mentioned before we started recording that you've got clients from all over the world who have bought your, your jewelry. Yes. What do you want to tell people about Portugal that perhaps they don't, they don't already know about Portugal? What do you want to tell people about your country? Well, what I can say is that it's a very uh, nice place to visit uh, with so many different um, things to do and to visit. We have sport, we have uh, uh, culture, theater, we have uh, concerts, we have so many different things to do and to explore. Um, and, and food. Did I, did I talk already about food? <laughs> <laughs> and food. <laughs> and wine. And wine. And wine, yes. So it's like, um, it's a very nice place to visit, to pass by, but also to uh, experiment um, has business, has uh, tourists, has... Um, because we have so much we have a very nice industry, industry, industry about uh, shoes, about clothes, about, uh, uh, and we have a lot of different ways to see. Uh, also, I'm remembering design. I'm remembering uh, well. There's a lot of 
Um, I'm a little bit confused of what I wanted to tell you, but it's about so many <laughs> things. <laughs> yes, I exactly. So it's like a, a, a nice place to come and visit, but has a tourist, but has business too. That's what I wanted to tell. Yeah. There's an opportunity. Exactly. Not just to come on holiday, but there's an opportunity yes. to, do, and there's, to do more. Yes, and there's a lot of people that has the know-how to do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, one thing, just mm -hmm. one thing that you want people to remember mm -hmm. and take away from our conversation. Well, uh, let's uh, talk about uh, something that I think uh, that defines my work, but also my way to see life. That I, I, I make uh, moments become eternal when I make jewelry. So feelings and shape, feelings take a shape, take a structure, becomes a piece of jewelry, and then uh, becomes eternal. So I think small moments, small ex experiences, uh, happiness, uh, love, uh, friendship, even some sadness, it's very important for us to remember that we are alive and we are experiencing life. So that's something that I like to keep for me. I like it. Maybe, maybe share. Nice. How can people find you online, follow you? Where can, yeah, we've got the, we've got the shop in Obidos, of course. Yes. But how can people follow you online and, and be kept up to date with what you're, what you're doing? Well, my website is www.ceciliaribeiro.com uh, On Instagram is Cecilia Ribeiro Jewelry uh, On Facebook, so look for Cecilia Ribeiro Jewelry and you will find information about it. Yeah. And if you come to the castle, the main entrance of the castle, just walk a little bit down, don't go into the entrance, yes, don't go in later. Yeah. We come down the right, the ramp on the right hand side and you'll find your shop yes. on the left. Yes. Blue True. So blue door? Uh, green door. Green door. Yeah. Okay. Cecilia, thank you so much. Um, a question that we ask all of our guests, Portugal, the simple life, why? Um, because that's it. It's uh, about moments that you can live and share without uh, much concern and relax and explore. Uh, so yeah, it's a simple life here. Wonderful. Thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you as well for inviting me. And I'm going to let you call it. Okay, that's a wrap. <laughs> So thank you once again to Cecilia and thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up and please leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget, Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine. So download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, um abraço. Welcome to The Simple Life.